Where do you end up if you travel to the far end of the rail network in the United States? What's it like up there? And is the only train journey up to Maine that still exists still worth riding? That's what we're finding out today as I take you with me on my journey from Boston to Brunswick, Maine aboard the Down Easter. It's for sure one of Amtrak's more niche routes, so we'll talk about why I'm even traveling on it, what it's like on board, how much it costs, and of course, what's waiting for me at the end of the line, having gone as far northeast as Amtrak will take you. It's also an extra exciting day for the map scratchers among us because by dropping me in Maine tonight, this train is taking me to my eighth state. And yeah, I know, so eight states, I'm just about to turn 29 years old. The maths on me going to all 50 before I die is not looking great, but please refrain from explicitly reminding me about that. And I'm just gonna keep on keeping on. Despite the building initially striking me as more of a cinema than a train station, inside I was greeted not by the smell of popcorn, but the smell of adventure, as my train was already up on the screen and it was taking me to Brunswick, Maine. Our 150 mile route today between Boston and Brunswick calls at a few places that I never would have thought to visit otherwise but look pretty interesting, like Saco, Wells for Kennebunkport, and Dover for Portsmouth, or as I like to call it, New Hampshire's little corridor of unoriginal names. This time though, I was headed for the end of the line, and my train up there was already boarding. I was in coach today in what I still think are the biggest and comfiest train seats I've ever seen and it was undersold enough that even without seat reservations I was easily able to get a two to myself. Having already outed myself as a USA completionist by revealing my state counting ways, it will come as no surprise that I was very excited to be heading up to Maine this way. My low-key goal of travelling to 48 slash maybe 49 states without flying has become pretty high-key lately. Seriously though, please don't explicitly tell me that my current pace isn't going to work, okay? So as we pulled away from Boston dead on time, just the fact that I was headed up to Maine on the Down Easter while it still exists was already enough of a novelty for me. As an Americana nerd first and geography nerd second, a ride in these huge silver cylinders on the good old railroad is always a treat, showing me angles of the American landscape that I otherwise would never get to see. But I'm also not unaware of Amtrak's poor reputation among actual non-tourist Americans who rely on it for real life stuff, nor of the power of the car lobby in the US. And I continue to hear over and over, either from making chit chat with other passengers or just overhearing them, that this is their first time ever riding a train. So news of routes occasionally being closed down is never surprising, and I was happy to have the opportunity to try out this one in case it goes the same way. Something that has actually happened once before, as Maine was cut off from the rail network for more than 30 years, until a campaign from the local government and various volunteer groups secured the funding in the 90s to create this new service. And so far, I was grateful that somebody had made the effort to do that, since the coming opportunity to pass through three states during the same sunset held with it a sense of adventure, hurtling me towards my eighth state, and in general, a new frontier, since I had never been further northeast than Boston before. I really didn't know what to expect up there, only that as a foreigner here in the US this time of year, I was obliged to centre my trip around New England in some way. I learn more and more with every visit that public transport works very differently here than it does in Europe, but more on that later. By the time we crossed our first state border from Massachusetts into New Hampshire, all of this sitting and relaxing and looking out at the lovely views under the late afternoon sun was making me thirsty, and I decided to go and sample the onboard menu. They do actually sell a weirdly huge variety of snacks and sandwiches and even pizza slices and hot pretzel sticks, whatever they are, but I wasn't actually particularly hungry, so I settled on a soda. Hi, what can I get here? Hi, can I have a Diet Pepsi, please? Diet Pepsi? Yes, please. Anything else? No, that's it, thank you. I was also happy to see that the bathroom was nice and clean and everything was working and that it provided the space to talk to the camera without disturbing the peace for all the normal people on board. We've also just crossed the state borders into and then out of New Hampshire again, so we're officially in Maine now. We're going as far northeast as trains can take you in America and I've really been enjoying it. It's a nice atmosphere on board, it's not very full, it's quite chilled out and I'm just taking in the fall foliage as I say here in the US and looking forward to arriving in Brunswick. combination of the orange sunset and the orange leaves.
considering how expensive it feels to just be alive in the USA some days, the price for a ticket on the Down Easter was a pleasant surprise. You can travel the whole line from Boston to Brunswick for $30, which is even cheaper than any buses I could find online for this route, and that price seems to be fairly static and doesn't spike at short notice like other lines do. And they do even scale it down to some fares for the shorter distances that are probably even cheaper than you could buy someone's used gum for in New York. For me, I found $30 to spend the afternoon sat in a clean and quiet carriage on a comfy seat, looking out of these huge windows to be an absolute bargain and I'm really glad that I travelled to Maine for the first time this way. But I can also see why you would be reluctant to come up here in a way that leaves you without your car at the other end because I remember what this extremely tired man still had in store for him. A 40 minute walk to a motel in a brand new place in the dark. All of my European expectations of connecting local train or bus services would have to be left at the door. In the US, it isn't like that. Either someone picks you up in a car or you're on your own. But that's the charm of getting to travel to all different corners of different countries and I have to admit that one, the number of passengers who stayed on board beyond Portland revealed that it's actually more impressive that this train went this far at all. And two, I spent most of my creepy walk through Brunswick at night walking past all these huge detached houses decorated for Halloween mostly just smiling to myself a lot, thinking how I can suddenly understand why Stephen King wrote the way he did, having grown up in this state. Viewed the next morning in daylight, here we can see the very far northeastern end of the Amtrak network. Although it doesn't look like much of a dead end from here, so maybe the freight trains do actually go further into Bangor and Canada. But this is the town, Brunswick, Maine the end of the line and my reward for coming up here. It's a small town of 20,000 people with a few nice coffee shops, this beautiful bridge and not a lot else. Having thankfully spent the night in this motel without meeting my grisly Hitchcockian end, I had a lovely conversation with the lady in the tourist centre who very excitedly added a pin to the island where I come from on her visitor map and who also informed me that my randomly just bought in Connecticut LL Bean jacket would score me a lot of prestige during my visit to Maine as it's actually a local brand. Overall, it's a really worthwhile place to visit, greener and more old school than most American towns I've been to, so small and niche as to be extra memorable, and as me the night before in the dark would say, The main fact of the matter is I enjoyed the journey and it brought me to Maine, state number 8. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me, check out my next video to see what I got up to while I was in this state, and I'll see you next time.